So this is actually an addition. This is an addendum to my why. Um, please ignore the crickets. <laughs> I have a bearded dragon that has dinner waiting for her. Um, usually it's my dog that's interrupting now. It's my cricket's food. <laughs> um, my why of is really personal to me and um, it, my kids are the most important things, people, whatever, in my life and they are the most special and they need things that I personally can't give all those things to them because I'm not in every moment of their life. The only thing I can do is try to make a change um, so that wherever they go over time it'll be a better place than it is right now. My brother um, my brother took his life eight years ago and it was devastating and it, to find out that he had a lot of psychological needs that were not met, that weren't even identified because he didn't talk about his feelings. He he held a lot in. Um, I really think it's unfair of, of how society creates these gender roles where men are not supposed to have feelings which is really interesting because there's a part of our brain that generates those and it's not determined based off of your um, your sex. Uh, men and women, males and females, have this part of the brain and that part of the brain is the cause of it, not strength. There's nothing uh, there's nothing good about manipulating your brain to make certain parts stop working um, when they're so damaging. There are obviously certain things like medications um, to help um, other brain disorders that cause psychological challenges that um, are helpful to be manipulated with medication. Um, but as far as behaviorally, that's it's not natural and um, and my brother suffered for it. Actually, he's not suffering anymore, but... Um, the people who miss him are. So, I have a son who is six years old, and even though he's encouraged to be expressive, in the house, um, both with in his dad's house and my house, and even the school he's in, um, there is an environment that is generated by things that are outside of my control, and it doesn't matter how much I encourage him to express himself, he is going to compare himself because that's what we're kind of programmed to do. Um, there's a social norm, which means that everything's being compared to that, and whatever doesn't fit is abnormal. I don't know who decided what's normal, but it's not normal for boys and men not to have emotions. And I already see him holding stuff in, and not that I'm looking for him to talk about all his feelings, but when something's hurting him, when somebody hurts him and he doesn't say anything about it, it scares me. It's It really does scare me because I didn't know how far my brother, how far it was. So, um, it doesn't help that I have bipolar disorder and ADHD and dyslexia. I have uh, limitations with those and I also have great strengths because of them. Those are um, hereditary so I have passed along some of those challenges to my kids and thankfully I personally uh, and their dad can help them with those challenges because 
we've learned through my experience how to um, navigate life a little bit better so that we can have uh, a successful life, whatever that means to us, because we're individuals. <laughs> we each have our own goals and aspirations and we don't fit in boxes. And yes, we have labels, um, but the labels don't define us. Words don't define us because I can be I can be forgetful and I could be um, I can be focused or um, I can be inspired and uninspired. I can be creative and um, dull, I grateful and I can be the opposites, but it doesn't mean that I'm one or the other because words don't define me. It's really important. That's what I, I try to tell my kids um, with a consistent message that words they're just letters that form a sound and that sound has a definition but that word those letters have a definition it doesn't define us no one has the power to define us nobody can tell them they're this or they're that just like they can't tell them that you like football um, you are dumb or you know you are um, you are blue-eyed when you're actually brown-eyed. You are stupid. Um, you are a swimmer when you can't swim, um, or a skier when you can't ski. And you can't tell somebody also that they're limited, that they have limitations that will prevent them from being successful in life. Um, you might as well call them a toaster or a purple elephant because they're not those things either. And that's what I try to teach my kids. When somebody says something to them that hurts their feelings, I ask them, so they called you stupid. Are you stupid? I said, no. I said, well, are you a toaster? No. And I always get these looks <laughs> like I've lost my mind and I guess because of my diagnoses, I. I guess maybe it's um, a little bit more, <laughs> I'm more susceptible to losing my mind or at least being identified because I identify with those things. Um, although I know a lot of people have that as well as far as uh, those things that you just notice about yourself that aren't typical. Um, so when I call them or ask them if they're a toaster and they look at me, they end up laughing eventually. And that's what I want them to feel and to hear when somebody asks them if, uh, or no, not asks, I'm sorry, when somebody tries to label them and define them as being stupid or slow or um, mean or nice or whatever. It doesn't matter if it's a positive thing even. If that's not them, that's not them. So that's my why.